The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day, this opportunity to be together. We give thanks for this parish family that we call St. Francis. We give thanks for the wonderful work that we have done together over the last year. As we look forward to the new year, we open our eyes to your call in our life. We, as we enter this period of discernment that should be the forefront of all that we do, helping us connect with you and the mission you call us to, to enlighten and inspire people, to connect people to Jesus, and to do it here in this lovely field that we call St. Francis. We ask that you open our hearts to our conversation and our time, and that we give thanks for the many blessings that have been stowed upon us at this time. We ask God your most holy and blessed name. Amen. Amen. All righty, folks, we're going to jump right in with um, our new database system. So I'm going to, a couple ground rules. The first one is you got to pay attention. That's the first one. So I'm going to need you all to pay attention to this one. I have zero authority here. Zilch. Not working. You got to stay. You can't go. You got to stay here. If you go in front of that one, it's going to squeak. Look, you can't, you can't stand in front of the microphone. You can, stay, you can stand here. Hey folks, let's pay attention. So, a couple ground rules. If you have questions, you must wait for a mic. The reason you must wait for a mic, it's not so much that we're worried about people in the room hearing you, which is still important, but we have people joining us online, and the sound system is feeding through to the live stream that I'm thankful for Dan Dallum for being here, who wears many hats. So remember, if I cut you off, if you start talking before a microphone, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to make sure everybody can participate. So don't be scared of the mic. Hold the mic up close to your mouth and then ask your questions so everybody can participate in here. And without further ado, we're going to our second agenda item, the introduction to Realm by our very own Noel Pecora. Hi, everyone. Good morning. How are you? So we are super, super excited to roll out this new program. Um, truly, it's going to benefit our office, but it will benefit the entire parish. Um, it will allow us to kind of dive deeper, get to know us, get to know each other better, and connect, um, connect easier. So right now, how many of you are familiar with our current process servant keeper? Anyone? Yeah. How many do you actually really like it? Oh, it's terrible. Oh, Wynn saying yes, he does. <laughs> um, truly, it's an outdated, it's outdated software. I Probably our office receives weekly complaints um, that they're not able to access the directory or get real-time information about our parishioners, especially those parishioners who might be in need and need some extra love um, and, uh, and attention. So, um, Realm, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of a video. It's just an introductory video of what it is. Um, you ready? Okay, who's excited about having a new app for St. Francis? I am. I am super pumped. Um, so what we will um, 
what we will do in the coming weeks, once we have our data converted from Servant Keeper, we will reach out to all of you with a special invite for you to get onto our app. Um, it will have instructions on how to log in. And then Father Justin and I will be doing personal videos to show you how we have um, done our own profile. So for those who are maybe not as tech savvy or app sa savvy, you'll have those videos to show you how to do it. Um, but it's really simple to, you'll be able to download your own photo, you'll be able to share whatever information you'd like so um, and how you'd like to share that information so maybe it's you just want to share it with our parish office that's totally fine or maybe you want to share it with the entire congregation and be part of our online directory that would be lovely um, in addition to just your basic information you can also include your interests your hobbies uh, the ministries that you're involved in it'll even allow you to um, include your LinkedIn link so uh, if you'd like to share your professional information, you can do that as well. So some questions people have had, well, will everyone have access to this information? No, it's really just our members only. So our folks who have actually gone through, um, who, are, you know, who have gone through our Liturgy of Belonging here, who've taken a newcomer's class, um, or maybe they have had their, um, they've had their, they've transitioned from another Episcopal church here. Those are the folks that would receive it, not just visitors. Um, so I know there was some concerns about who would be able to access our information, but it's really just for our parish. Um, in addition to just having your kind of profile information, you are going to be able to do a lot on that app. You're going to be able to make all of your donations and contributions via that app, and you'll be able to see real time um, when that hits, um, and you'll be able to receive a receipt, and you'll be able to download a giving statement at any time. You don't have to wait for us quarterly to send it to you. It'll be available to you at the tips of your finger, like up right at your fingertips. Um, the other really cool thing is that you'll be able to register for events um, on that app. So gone are the days of Sign Up Genius. So you'll be able to register and pay for events. So if you're, for example, if you'd like to go to maybe an event that, had, that we're doing a fundraiser for, you'll be able to sign up and pay right there. Um, another really cool feature is you'll be able to sign in. So you'll be able to sign in your children or grandchildren into our nursery via this app or for having a special formation and we'd like to just kind of gauge who's here with us, you'll be able to sign in. And there's a lot of features that we're still learning about, um, and we hope to roll them all out within, you know, probably a good, it'll probably take us a solid 12 months, but um, we're excited about this. Any questions? Yes. Question, we now use Vanco. Yes. Will our Vanco accounts be automatically closed and then we go to Realm? Unfortunately, we're looking at that right now. That's a really excellent question and we know that a lot of you will have that, have, probably have that exact same thought. Um, we are looking into that. The likelihood of that happening is probably slim, right? We will probably all have to go back into, um, we'll have to go back into this app and redo all of our, um, our giving. Now, I know that might sound really frustrating and aggravating, but I promise you this app is very, very friendly. It's very consumer friendly. It's, I find, and we have a lot of calls in the office, that the Vanco app on our website is really hard to use. How many of you have called? I know, I see some of you. I know. There are, every year around this time, it's like, well, where do I click? How do I put this in? Um, it, it's, it's not very friendly. On the app, it's actually very, very easy to use, and we're going to have videos for you um, where we're personally doing it, and Realm has also provided us with step-by-step step -step, step -step videos on how to do that, on how to put your personal information in, if you'd like to make a reoccurring payment, um, those types of things, and if you'd like to save your card in there. I will say it is actually still Vanco. It's just another form of Vanco. So what we're using right now is probably a very antiquated um, form of Vanco. We're going to be using the most updated version. Um, and I, the really cool thing is you'll be able to not only use your app, but eventually you can even text your contributions. That's pretty awesome, to be able to just text how much you'd like to give, and there will be a special code for that. 
Yeah, so I think the, the big thing is the user experience yes. is going to be way more user friendly than what we've been using for the last two decades. Yes. <laughs> Something like that. Right. There's a uh, oh. question over here. Oh, question. Hi, I'm Teresa Boucheri. I transferred last year from Episcopal Redeemer. Yes. And we did use Realm, and it's a very good system. Oh, good. And I did have one comment about sure. tithing on Realm. Mm -hmm. They do charge a $1.50 administration processing fee for yes. every time you pay through Realm. And I don't know if you guys will have that option to have the contributor that's paying the tithe to pick that up for you, or if you're going to incur all these charges under the parish. That is such an excellent point, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, right now, in our current system with Avanco, we do to we have to pay a processing fee each and every time, unless the donor um, will they will elect to cover those fees. So yes, we we do have experience with that. Thankfully, it will be the same for this for this Vanco that we'll have in Realm, where folks can still elect to cover that that processing fee. But thank you for bringing that up. I'm glad that you had a great experience with Realm too. Thank you. Um, so the the one thing I would just like to stress to everyone is, uh, as you're getting used to this system, so is our so is our office and all of our staff. We're going to be taking a lot of trainings, and you know we've been doing a lot of research. But I would just ask for your patience as we kind of switch over to this new program. Um, we are still waiting for all of our data. And once that goes in, it's going to take just some time for us to get uh, used to all the ins and outs. And so we may not have everyone's information at the, at the tips of our finger, like at our fingertips um, when you call like we normally do. So we just ask for your patience in these next couple weeks. And hopefully by March, we'll be ready to roll. Anything questions? Any questions? It's going to be a great system, folks. And the thing you have to remember is, like any directory, just like in the old days when you had Olin Mills come, remember, and take all your pictures in front of the kooky backdrop and have you cock your head like to the side, you had to decide then and there what you, you know, and I'm, I'm a cradle Episcopalian. We used to have to do, I was a kid and I had to do that. Um, you had to check if you wanted to be uh, listed in the directory. So even back then, you would get all the pictures but not everybody would be listed because you may not opt in. So Realm, in real time, you will be able to opt into what you want your fellow parishioners to see in terms of a directory. So if you want them to see everything in terms of cell phone numbers, home numbers, if people still have home numbers, um, address, you will check those boxes. Um, and at some point we will, well, we'll get down the line. There'll be other announcements yes. coming, but it's going to be a process, and we're just going to need your patience. Yes. We're going to need your dedication. We're going to need your love. We're going to need your smiles and your participation. Yes. Your participation to make this successful, and it will go smoothly. We will have more answers because we are going from such an antiquated system to a new system we will see exactly how our data comes in. And we very well may be working hard on the back end to get everything just right. It's like bringing something from DOS to Windows 11. <laughs> so you can imagine what that might be like. Hopefully it's gonna go smoothly and Realm's pretty awesome, but I wanna set expectations where they are. <laughs> I want to exceed these very low expectations. All righty, let's move on to item number two, the budget, which is how many people are here just to see the budget? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I was curious. I was curious. All righty, folks, so this is a condensed budget. The first thing I want to say is anybody can come into the office and see a detailed budget. Anybody can come in the office and see detailed financials at any time. And we're going to work this year on, on ways of, of presenting not just numbers, but data. A lot of what we've been doing over the last two years is giving a bunch of busy work to our bookkeepers and accountants, um, and it doesn't tell a story. We're trying to move to be able to tell the story with the budget. You know, I would love to present a narrative budget to you at some point in the future that tells a story about how the dollars follow uh, the mission. But anybody can come in at any time and see the detailed budget. There is one exception to that. You do not get to see, for HR purposes, 
you do not get to see the payroll of your lay staff. Okay, that's just, that's just a no-brainer. You just can't see that stuff. But everything else is wide open, 100% transparent. You can come at any time. You can sit with Noel, you can sit with me, you can sit with Sarah. You name it, you can sit with us, and you can ask a thousand questions if you want to. Um, and trust me, we are good at asking questions, I have learned. Lots of questions get asked. Uh, so you can come do that. The big thing is, this is a huge step for St. Francis. If you just look at the bottom line, if you just look at how much revenue, to give you an idea, when, we, when I came in February 2022, we had right at 80 pledging units, and this budget represents 157 pledging units two years later. So when you think of it that way, we're crossing uh, the million dollar threshold. That's a big step for St. Francis. But as they say in the hip hop world, more money, more problems. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things when you have more money, then you have to really get down to the nitty gritty where you want to spend the money, right? And then there's about 50,000 competing interests on where that money's gonna go. This budget in front of you comes straight out of QuickBooks, so it looks very technical. What I wrote underneath is to help you understand from the magazine you, you saw to the budget that's in front of you, the categories. Because how many of you think I only do administration? How many of you think I do worship? Participate in worship. Outreach? Formation? Hey, if you don't raise your hands, then I'm just going to start deleting things from my job description. <laughs> Same with Noel. How many thinks Noel just does administration? Uh, so the point is, it's not to sit here and hide numbers. It's to, one of the great travesties in the church is we present all our payroll and everybody just thinks we're a bunch of people sitting in cubicles punching widgets. But if you were to eliminate, how many of us would miss if all of us disappeared? How many of you miss us? The reality is the church is a combination of your volunteer hours, your treasure, your time, and then the staff that comes alongside to make the programs possible. So to help give an idea, and I've done this at every single church I've been the rector at, to give you an idea of what that looks like, we divide up our compensation and our salaries across the areas in which we participate. So you can get an idea of how we split our time and what that looks like in dollars to you. A simple way of thinking about it is anybody who comes and sits with Carrie Lynn, our bookkeeper, and you spend an hour with her, and she doesn't get her work done, which is fine, because her work, part of her, big part of her job is relationships with you, we pay her an hour. And then we pay her for an extra hour to do whatever she didn't get done in that hour. Same pr principle. If I'm out doing mission work, a portion of my time is out doing mission work. So we have some really good things to, to look at and to celebrate. And I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, but you can see formation, outreach, worship, and admin there at the bottom, what we're doing. Big increases in formation, big increases in outreach, um, big increases in property and grounds, which has been a big deal to, to parts of the vestry. Uh, the net ordinary income at the bottom, that $40,000, is a maintenance reserve that's going to get put away quarterly, hopefully. And let me just pause for a second. This budget, just like a household budget, only matters if the revenue comes in, right? If revenue doesn't come in, I don't know where those expenses are going. So we have to remember in the church, we depend upon you. We depend upon your belief in what God's calling you to do. We depend upon you to continue your giving, you to participate in the life of the church to make this possible. And if all that comes in, if all of it happens, then we'll be starting to put away money every year to look ahead to roofs, air conditioners. And I might add, on top of that 40000 repairs and maintenance, in capital improvements that are budgeted to be spent this year. Does anyone want to take a stab at how much we, we budgeted for that this year? Not Cindy. $73,000. Think about that for anybody. I'm looking at Steve. Think about the days when we, 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 we budgeted 18000 That's all we had. 18000 44000 of that 73000 or 74000 excuse me, 44,000 of that is going to be used to replace a roof on the office building. It's going to be used to update air conditioners and HVAC units. We actually, because of your generosity, aren't going to be scrambling 
to figure out how to do that because we have it budgeted. That's a huge step in the right direction, being good stewards of our property. And I might add, these are just numbers. Think about all the equity we have as well. How many of you know we sit on 45 acres? 45 acres. What do you think 22 acres in a worst case scenario is worth on the market right now? Like if all of y'all just ran away and we had to endow this church, those 22 acres, just to give you real time dollars, you could endow this whole church and we'd be like a Church of England church with our lights on and everything. (laughs) Not saying we're going to sell it, but in a worst case scenario, we could have an empty church with the lights on and a clergy person and a staff to greet nobody. Because that's how much value you have in equity. And that's not something we talk about. We don't talk about the equity and the assets you have. And we have to ask ourselves, with that being said, on the budget, how do we use those assets to help us with our mission and ministry? You know, what do those assets cost us to maintain? What are, how do we utilize them for the budget? These are questions we have to ask ourselves. And to be 100% clear, I am not saying we need to sell the 22 acres. I'm using that as an example if all of you vanish and don't give. And we want to keep the church here. We have all this equity that we forget about sometimes. We forget about what all this is worth of what we're sitting on. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? So anybody can come see us, can come look at the detail in the budget. Hopefully, as the vestry meets throughout the year, we'll find a way to be better uh, at communicating to you all, even if it's just the treasurer's report with what's going on. Um, And then next year, we're going to be looking to my my personal goal um, amongst the many, you know, more money, more problems. My ultimate goal is for 10% of our operating budget right off the top uh, goes right out to mission grants. So that's what I'm working towards or pushing. Ultimately, I don't get to make the decision, but I'll be pushing hard for that because what is the church about? Mission and ministry. Mission and ministry. The living stones, not the ones that rust and moth consume. The living stones, which is all of you. And we'll say more about that in a minute. But we want to make sure we live into that mission and ministry. All right? Now we've got some exciting reports coming from Dan Dallum. Dan, can you do this all at the same time? Okay. He knows it. He's coming. He's coming to get this microphone up here. Sorry, yes. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Dan Dallum. I am the youth minister director, director here. Um, I deal with the middle school students and the high school students. I've been asked to give them so just some very brief highlights of what's going on and the great things that's happening. Um, this year, we split it all. We're, we're, first of all, we're able to split middle school and high school together, um, a, a separate. So now we have middle schoolers who have middle school discussions. We have high schoolers who have high school discussions. We do this in two separate classes. This has been wonderful. Last year, we met on Wednesday nights only. This year, in 2024, we started meeting on Wednesday nights and Thursday nights. This now allows our youth to come either a Thursday night or a Wednesday night, or all four nights, and this has been fantastic. I've had two meetings, and at each one of those meetings, I've had new faces. So this allows us, allows me to get more, to to allow your youth to come to more meetings. Um, In order to do this, and Father Justin will speak to this a little bit later, uh, I need volunteers. I need help with these classes. I need need at least one, if not two more adults in my classes to kind of help things move along. This can look as one person volunteering for one evening, and if we have enough, then that's once, you may only have to volunteer once. Um, If I I can get two people, you know, the the more people I have, the less you have to volunteer. Obviously, we can split this up. We can come in and just work in middle school, or just a high school, or one evening to do both classes. I will teach the class, I just need volunteers in to help me with the youth. And last but not least, Tuesday, February 13th, is our annual pancake dinner. Um, it's five, we serve from 5.30 to 7. Please come out, support us, support the youth. All the proceeds from the pancake supper go immediately and go directly to supporting the Happening and New Beginnings movement. 
This way we can offer scholarships to our, to our youth who go to New Beginning, which is the middle school um, weekend for, for um, revitalization, revitalization, as well as happening in, for our high schoolers. If you have any questions, know that I believe I'm going to turn this over to Lindsay Tonge. Hello, good morning. I'm Lindsay Tonge. I'm the Children's Ministry Director here. Um, so, kind of bouncing off of what Dan was saying. Oh, there goes my pen. Um, as you can see on Sunday mornings, as our children process out of the church, you guys can see the ministry is really growing. Um, first, I'm going to give credit to Jesus because I've, I feel like he is really working wonders in this church. Um, we are probably having around... I'd say 45 to sometimes 60 children in Sunday school um, in kids' chapel every Sunday morning. So we have grown maybe three times in the past year and a half, I'd say, um, So, which is amazing, absolutely amazing um, to see these little kids come in and learn about Jesus and know that he loves them and that he's their friend is, is really amazing. So with that also comes, just like Dan was saying, we also need volunteers. Um, we have uh, adult volunteers and teen volunteers who come in and just are extra hands um, and eyes uh, for the children. Um, so if you're interested and you would like to maybe sign up, um, it's like once every maybe eight weeks. Um, and actually, the more we have, the less you're in there. So like once every eight to 12 weeks, probably. So um, I encourage everyone, uh, if you have a heart uh, for children and you love children's ministry, please, we welcome anybody who's um, interested in helping. Um, as far as what we have going on, we're already getting ready for Vacation Bible School. Yay! <laughs> we actually have our first Vacation Bible School meeting um, after church today. Um, if you are interested at all in helping out with Vacation Bible School, we uh, encourage you guys to attend the meeting or at least reach out to me um, and let me know. Um, we need lots of volunteers. I think last year we had a total of over 70 um, children. So maybe, no, oh, I was gonna say, yeah, 150 children. So with that, we need lots of volunteers. To announce the dates, it's gonna be June the 3rd through the 7th, which is the first week of summer vacation um, for St. John's um, County. So it's gonna be June the 3rd through the 7th. If you have children or grandchildren that you would like to jot those dates down, um, and we're really excited about the theme this year. It's gonna be Hometown Nazareth where Jesus was a kid. So it's gonna talk about Jesus growing up and um, how he's relatable to the children. So it's gonna be a great program. Um, again, we just, we, we welcome any help, um, anyone who is able to help. We have from, you can help lead a crew, you can help with the kitchen staff. There's lots of places we can plug you, but we would really appreciate it if you guys would take some time and think and pray about that if you were interested in that. Um, as far as, that goes. I mean, we're just, we're, I'm super excited and very thankful to be part of the children's ministry. And uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be part of the children's ministry here at St. Francis. So. So. All righty, folks. And I want to just follow up on that and remind you that many hands make light work and you're never too old you can be too young, but you're never too old to work with children and youth. Uh, and because our programs are burgeoning, and I'm going to talk about those numbers in a little bit in my address, it's incredible, and it takes the talent and the time of so many of you to make it possible. So I really want you to consider volunteering for Vacation Bible School, volunteering in the children's chapel rooms during uh, Sunday morning, and uh, consider ways that you can participate in the lives of these young Christians coming up in the world, right? They're not going to learn it through osmosis. They're going to learn it through relationship, just like all of us learn it, all through relationship. And that relationship depends on the adults who are willing to come in and smile. But I'm going to be honest with you and hear this with a great deal of, of care, with one huge qualifier. I was born into the Episcopal Church. I remember the days when the priest would slap me on the hand if I didn't acolyte right correctly. That's not where we're at. 
That doesn't mean we tolerate disruptions to a point, but we also do have a quite a slightly different place than I remember when I was a kid, which I didn't always want to go back to, but it was either build a fence or go back to it. So I chose to go back to it. We've created a nurturing environment, a loving environment. So just know that when you come into it, you got to drop those expectations, meet those children where they are, and model where we want them to be. Does that make sense? But if you bring, like, my mama, who I hope's not watching, those expectations of 1986, when I was a little one, we're a slightly different place in 2023 uh, with how we're meeting them, where we are. And that's a 2024. 2024. I'm reflecting on 2023, but we are in 2024. Yes, so we're in a slightly different spot in 2024. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but we need you. We need all of you because they just keep coming. And it's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, it's awesome. And I'll talk about the numbers in a minute. Any questions about that? Second part of that, safeguarding God's children, safeguarding God's people. This is a training program through the Episcopal Church, the the National Church. It's for any volunteer that works with adults or children. It's not because we think you're going to do something wrong. It's to train you to look for things that are not appropriate and also to create space where you don't put yourself in a compromising situation. So one of the things you have to be willing to do, it's all online, is go through Safeguarding God's Children and Safeguarding God's People training. If I had it my way, the entire parish would be safeguarded, just to say, hey, this is a safe church. Again, it's not about us thinking there's something wrong with you. It's about us creating a space because we believe that we are here to respect the dignity of every human being and seek and serve Christ in our littlest ones all the way up to our oldest ones. So remember that. There'll be lots of information coming out about that. As you participate in ministries, there are requirements for safeguarding. And now with a new diocesan administration, which is the other hat I wear, we are getting all of that up to date in this diocese. And we need to do that here at St. Francis. We're in pretty good shape, but we have some, some work to do there. So we're going to spend the early part of this year getting everything in good order, starting with the vestry and down to our ministry leaders and down to our volunteers. So Look for those emails. Don't ignore them. Again, you get to do it from the beauty of your sofa. You don't have to come in. You can sit at home and press play, watch the video, and answer the questions, and you will be surprised at what you'll learn, and it'll train you to look even outside of the church for different things that don't seem right, Uh, and you'll be able to say something. So be on the lookout for that, and that's a big part of volunteering with our children and youth ministry. All righty, before I jump to Sarah, we're going to celebrate our outgoing vestry members Starting with our beloved senior warden, Cindy Fielding. Come on up. So Cindy has been the fearless leader over so much. We ordered you an icon that hasn't come in yet. Look, it's double-sided. Well, we ordered it from a monastery, so it's being custom made. Uh, a feast of Saint, It's the St. Francis icon. Let's show everybody. And you can see the back. It's just the same. Isn't that kind of cool to say? So she can look at it while y'all look at it. We're trying to find something that meant something. Well, we're St. Francis, and what a beautiful, I love this icon. It supports the work of a local monastery uh, in Virginia, and they hand make these. So we decided this is going to be our tradition going forward for our wardens, is they can hang it in their house. It's 11 by 14. So it's a big one. You're always going to remember St. Francis. Uh, We're going to put it right at the doorway, right, Walt? Right there, right there. He's going to be looking at you when you come in. You can just imagine that. I'm going to talk a lot about uh, this vestry's accomplishments, but I'm truly thankful for Cindy for her hard work, her dedication. This maintenance reserve is strictly on her shoulders, and uh, the, the looking forward towards all of that is a big part of her leadership. And you're about to hear about 15 different things the vestry's done this year in just a minute, and it's all at her leadership. So I'm truly thankful for you. I'm honored. Now, guess what, Matt Ray? You get an icon, too. Tom Keller, you get an icon, too. I don't have a third hand to hold up Suzanne Blake's. So these are the gentlemen rolling off, and Suzanne, is Suzanne here? I don't want to miss, I didn't see her. Not quite as big as 11 by 14. I think Mary will be happy about that. Mary, does, Mary loves an icon. 
Should we get like a huge one, Mary? Oh. Life size. We can get you a bogglehead icon. There you go. That's more but I'm thankful for your leadership. Matt was big on our stewards. Oh, that's a bummer. Because you're not the senior, you weren't the senior warden. That's just how that works. That's how that happens. So Tom Keller chaired our Mission and Evangelism Committee this past year, which did incredible work. And then Matt Ray, how many people were part of the annual giving campaign? Did you see that magazine? Did you see the video? <laughs> Along with the work of Dan Dallum as well on the video production, but Matt has that creative eye. I am so thankful for your, uh, your three years. It was, a, it was a beautiful privilege for three years, wasn't it? Yes, okay, <laughs> moving right along, okay. I was going to play a game with name your favorite year of the three, but we'll just skip that. We'll skip that. And then Suzanne Blake, who's not with us, and here's why we're joking, folks. I came in 2022, so anybody who has been on the vestry, going through a transition is just hard in general. So this was the last class of vestry members to roll off who actually lived through a rector transition. That's never easy. Um, you know, when we think about our former ward and whenever, I mean, that's just, you have a lot you have to do that's not normal when you don't have a rector in place. So these guys are the last on the class to walk through. And I think this is Matt's ninth stint on the vestry. I don't know. It's a terrible privilege for you, Matt. We'll see you in three years. <laughs> Mary's like, nope, nope, nope. That's like Vanessa when Vanessa's like, nope, mm-mm. Anyways, and then Suzanne Blake, who's also uh, not with us today, we are thankful for her leadership. She is in that class as well, and she still serves on our foundation board as the treasurer, so that's still really cool, and she's exercising that leadership. And you know, the beauty for Matt and Tom is, because they've been on the vestry, and as we live into this kind of new, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, this kind of new way of being the church, because we have expanded so much, uh, their leadership and their ability to pop in where they, where they love, where their passion is. That's a, that's a gift that retiring vestry members have, is to be able to now look at the church and say, where, where am I called? Where do, what am I called to do? What am I excited about? So now Tom and Matt will have that opportunity to do that work and uh, to be refreshed and not just do the things that are hard sometimes. Love you, buddy. Eight times later. All righty. All righty, without further ado, a couple things that happened this year. Did y'all know we invited Associate Rector on? <laughs> oh, that was a big job of the vestry right there. Mother Sarah, come on down. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Um, so yes, I got here in September, and I just want to say first that this place is so wonderful. Uh, the church is so full of love. I see the Holy Spirit working here. Um, I am delighted to get up and come to work every day. I love being here on Sundays. I love seeing y'all. I love you, and I am absolutely grateful every day for the blessing of God bringing me, calling me here to this community. Um, and I'm not just saying all of this. I truly feel so blessed and grateful um, to be here. So thank you so much for giving me this um, ministry. Um, I want to talk a little bit about one of the ministries of the church here at St. Francis that um, I am really proud of. I had no um, influence in starting. It started with Father Rick and Jane and J.B. Hall. It's called St. Francis Cares, and it is a pastoral care uh, ministry, and there are so many people involved in this ministry, and it's a part of the mission of the church to care for the people in the community. So, of course, we do mission and ministry outside of our walls, but also when people who are in our community are sick, suffering, um, have a new baby, or um, have surgery, or just need a listening ear or prayer, this ministry, St. Francis Cares, comes alongside people when they are in those situations. So, 
Um, there are several components to St. Francis Cares. Um, they offer prayer and cards for people, sending people cards. They offer transportation. If you have a doctor's appointment or if you need a ride somewhere, you can call the church office and let us know. And we can put someone in touch with you who will come and help you. Um, if you uh, need, if you have surgery, if you have a death in the family, again, if you have a new baby and you need um, help with meals, let us know and we can connect you with St. Francis Cares. Uh, they take the flowers from the altar every week and divide those up into smaller bouquets and take them to people. Um, we have a long list of people who receive flowers straight from the altar as a gift and a way to reuse those flowers. So um, if you have any sort of need like that, or if you know someone who does, please encourage them to just call the church office and let us know. And you don't have to even give any details about what's going on. If you, don't want, if you just need prayer, hey, I need prayer for whatever, or you can give small amounts of details. Not a lot of personal information is fine. Uh, just, to, just to let us know so that we can be able to best serve you and minister to you in terms of pastoral care. And the final thing that is a part of this ministry is Eucharistic visitors. So uh, I think during COVID, there, that was a ministry that was sort of delayed or stopped for a little while because taking communion to people in their homes, you know, we didn't want to contaminate anyone or get sick. So we are really trying to get that started up again. Um, if you would like to receive or know someone who would like to receive communion in their homes, um, Father Justin or I or Deacon Mark will all, can always bring that to you, but we also will be employing some of our lay Eucharistic visitors to go and take communion to people in their homes if they are homebound or are sick for a long period of time. So um, with that, I want to also say we have a healing service at, on Wednesday at 6 o'clock every Wednesday. Please come. It is 30 minutes. There's no music, um, so that makes it shorter. It's a contemplative, <laughs> Charlie said, <"Whew." laughs> it's a more contemplative, meditative break in the middle of the week. It's just a time to come to the church, to pray, to gather together. We do offer healing prayer and anointing, laying on of hands with the oil and special prayers for that. It's also Holy Eucharist. So the healing prayer part is optional. If you want to just come and sit and pray, we are... Um, you know, we're, it, we're, you can do that. That is totally fine. Um, thank you so much for uh, welcoming me and my daughter into this community. My daughter is the one that's in Vermont. She's not here very often, but um, f feel just so grateful. And I am, I am thankful every day for y'all. Thanks. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, before I give my final address, um, I want to take a moment and give Charlie uh, the microphone, our, our music director, our beloved organist and choir director and man of many hats and many instruments. But before I do, we're going to say a special prayer because uh, Friday, he tragically lost his brother Hal in a car accident as he was moving up here. So we're going to say a prayer. Hence the fact that he wasn't on the agenda, but he is in a spot where he wants to share some words with you, and I think that's important, as our ministry leaders have had a chance to do that. But before we do, we're going we're gonna to give thanks uh, for Hal's life, and we're going to lift up Charlie in prayer. So the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day, this opportunity to be together. We lift up Hal. We give thanks for, to you to, for giving him to us, to having to hold and to love, especially Charlie and his family and his brothers. We know that you wept at the grave of your friend Lazarus, so draw near to Charlie and to all those who mourn, comfort them in their sorrow, and remind them that as Hal opened his eyes in your arms, that we are called into your eternal rest through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. And Charlie's going to stay seated. Is, is that good? Yes. Because my back hurts. <laughs> so I'm going to say a little bit about the music uh, ministry here. Um, 
The music ministry actually started before we had a church, before we had a pavilion, before we had anything out here but a bunch of trees. Um, we had a picnic table south by the road, and we would worship there. It was a second site worship place from Christ Church, and I would go out there and play the music for the service. All by myself. <laughs> but uh, then we moved to the pavilion and started getting a choir. The, we, the church was built, and we started getting you know, more and more. And now I'm so happy to say we have a saxophonist. I can't remember your name. What was it? Great. <laughs> we have a good guitarist, Mark Wooten, and we have many, many singers. Some of them just show up on Sunday and say, hey, do you mind if I sing? And what do you think? And uh, we have not a choir, but a choral group. And I love all of them. And you should love them, too, because it's our honor and our pleasure to lead the music ministry at this church, which also happens to be why I'm here today. Didn't want to stay home and be sad. I wanted to come here and worship with my friends and family. So if anyone has an inkling to join the choir, give me a call or just talk to me after church or before church or any of my choir members. I'd be glad to fill you in on the uh, details. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Charlie. And I was... Um, I want to echo that. This is Charlie's love. It's his passion. Uh, when I found that, heard the news on Friday, I said, Charlie, you don't need to come to church. And he said, that's where I need to be. That's where I need to be. Uh, and then I said, okay, and that's where we're going to be then. Uh, and we're here with you together, and that's the important piece. So if you are interested in singing, he said you can talk to him before or after. Heck, you can talk to him in the middle of the service. He's okay with that too. Uh, he, if you want to sing, he wants to know. Uh, that's just how he operates. All right, I'm going to wrap this up with just my, uh, probably briefer than the past addresses. Um, I kind of edited myself over the last uh, 48 hours down to be something a little bit more, as things were happening, I kind of truncated this down a little bit to be a little more focused on what we're doing on, what we're doing and celebrating what's, what's ahead. So a couple things, you know, when I stand here and I look at all of you and I see that we're just uh, bathed in God's glory, just bathed in the Holy Spirit, that this is a place buzzing. How many people have joined us in the last year that's sitting in this room? How many of you joined us today for the first time? In the last year, raise your hands high in the last year. You know, have you ever asked yourself this question? Why did you come to St. Francis? Why did you stay at St. Francis? Because ultimately that right there is the fundamental question we have to ask ourselves and something that we saw over the life of 2023. What a remarkable journey. Um, when I think about the vestry, as I said a minute ago when we were celebrating the outgoing vestry members, it's been easy uh, to realize that at different times some vestries get very tangible things like building a building. You know, they get to see that and they're like, I was part of that. Some vestries get to, to put together a strategic plan and they get to hold that. And some vestries become shepherds of a lot of work that's really important. And because of our, our massive amount of growth, this vestry over the last year had a lot of work that you don't always get to see the tangible side of it. If you don't train your eyes to look beyond the, the minutia to the larger picture. And I want to highlight what this vestry either had a hand, well, they had a hand in all of it, and what this vestry accomplished with your help over the last year. And I think it's really important we all celebrate this because we forget that without the vestry, these things don't happen. Mo Where did Mother Sarah go? Oh, Mo I was like, Mother Sarah. Deacon Mark, and he already left the building. Like a good deacon, he's taking the gospel out into the world. Out into the field. So here's what we've accomplished in the last year. And this is not an exhaustive list. And this... I want you to hold on to record attendance. So from 2022 to 2023, our ASA went from 223. So our average Sunday attendance went from 223 to 333. Lately, as you saw in the magazine, we've been over 325 at the 1015 service, and they keep coming. Isn't that incredible? 
And you don't have to clap at that. But that's kind of the point of a church, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's kind of the point. We had newcomer series that were full to the point where we had to find new spaces for them to gather. Uh, and we have div- diverse people coming from all backgrounds. We expanded our worship offerings. We have a Starling service each Thursday. We started that. We have a, um, the healing service that you heard Mother Sarah talk about. We had a record number of confirmations. 42 people got confirmed at St. Francis this past May. 42. 42. What scares me is you don't look that excited by this. <laughs> Music department. The children's choir. How many of you heard the children's choir sing? Right? Formation. We've added Bible studies. We've added different parts and series to our programs. We've created space to do that by adding staff and investing in staff members. We've been able to create partnerships between staff and um, and volunteers, as you saw with Lindsay. We depend upon the volunteers, but should you imagine if Lindsay or Dan weren't in the picture? Think about that for a second, okay? Ministries and outreach. Think about all the outreach ministries that have popped up. All of your work with the firefighters, creating money and funding for all of that to happen. Our Cuba ministry, we had a successful mission trip this past November that was incredible. And then our staff expansion, which the vestry played a direct hand in, which created all of this to be possible. Um, adding, so this past year, just for example, and we should have showed you last year's financials. That's our bet. So we'll email those out. But you'll see an operating deficit last year, which is not uncommon in churches. And you can go back and look at St. Francis over a decade and see these. Um, and part of the reason we did, we had air conditioners, and then we added staff. But what we didn't add, so it was negative 56,000 we finished 2022. So for everybody financially, you're like, oh my gosh. But let me tell you what didn't happen. We never moved all these special gifts that came in to support Mother Sarah coming on board. So your giving was that far above what you told us you were going to do that we covered Jenny starting. Paul Rose. Who likes Paul Rose, our facilities manager? We started Mother Sarah, and none of the help that was set aside, for whatever reason, it was just a mistake, which would have been $22,000 off of that fifty six, and we replaced three air conditioners. And we were only 56 in the hole and only really 30 something in the hole, 38 because of the air conditioners. Isn't that incredible? So when you know that and then you know what our maintenance reserve is, what our capital improvement line is, what our repairs and maintenance line is, all totaling $113,000, I think we're in better shape this year. What do you think? So all that to say, this vestry created space for all of that to happen. It created space for Dan to grow his youth ministry from 10 to 20, 25, 30 each and every night. For Lindsay to go from, this cracks me up every time, uh, she went from 20 or so in one room to now she's like, where do I put all these kids? Because we went from about 40 on Sunday to 90 to 100 on any given Sunday of children. And that is really cool. All of that is only possible because you have a vestry, because you have a staff. So these aren't necessarily, well, they are very tangible. You can see them, but we don't always connect the dots to how leadership creates a space for that to happen. And that's a really important thing we have to start doing because as I reflected on the last 36 hours, I realized how easy it is as humans for us to get stuck in the minutia and forget the big narrative of what's going on, of what happens before us, of the lives that are being transformed here each and every week, of the people that have joined us in the past year, of the people who, despite all odds of what I was taught in seminary about comfortable capacity. How many of you have heard of comfortable capacity? Supposedly, people will stop coming if they can't find a seat very easily. Well, folks, they keep coming, and they sit in chairs. We have a retired bishop in our midst almost every Sunday. Bishop, our, one of our assisting bishops uh, who will be with us in May for confirmation is Chip Stokes. He doesn't wear a purple shirt, but him and his wife, and he's like, I just come because I don't know what's going on here. I don't see this at any Episcopal church I've ever been to. Literally, that's what he told me to my face. And then the, the thing he follows up with is he's like, you clearly, and not me, you, clearly understand what church is about. 
Now, with all that being said, I'm also aware of the other big thing that we had to accomplish as a vestry, and we're still working on it, and the vestry coming in will be working on it. We are still dealing with the anxiety that growth brings. You know, and that's okay. I said this in a sermon a few weeks ago. Some of us are seeing the growth and going, well, gosh, this is kind of hard for me because I feel like I used to know everybody. I feel like I used to be kind of, I used to look around my section and kind of know who you are. That's a totally normal thing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a normal part of human identity. And part of our job as, a, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as St. Paul says, is we have to be willing to talk about that. We have to be able to talk about it with our vestry, with our leaders. We've got to be able to kind of hold on to that anxiety, but also not let it control us. We can't let it thwart the mission to seek and serve Christ in all persons, to go out and share the good news. So that's something that we'll be working on this year. This vestry that just rolled off, they started a strategic plan process that will come to fruition. Tom and Matt and, and Suzanne won't be a part of the finished product, but Cindy will, uh, and others will be a part of the finished product. You will have an opportunity later this year to participate in crafting that. This vestry started that, which picks up on the five-year plan that ended. And folks, if I may be so bold, we'll, we'll start having conversations about how do we create more space? I don't say that to scare you, but we have to decide. Is our job to bring people to Jesus? And if so, we probably should help, uh, help find some seats for them. And we should probably create a little space for them. Um, and that is only possible because of the work of the vestry this year, who's laid all of the foundations that can now be built upon. So it might not have been the most appealing work for this vestry, but it's probably the single most important work in the last seven years, short of a rector transition that any vestries had to do, was lay all the foundation that this outgoing vestry did to begin to look beyond the minutia to the larger picture of what God's doing here and to see how do we build a place where people are connected to Jesus. In this incoming vestry, under the leadership of our new senior warden that I will announce at this particular moment, Mr. Dan Cuckle standing there at the back door. <laughs> we will be able to build upon that foundation and we'll have some exciting things. But I want you all to remember and give thanks for your sitting vestry and the vestry of 2023, because without that year, we can't have this year. We can't do the work we need to do this year without that year. So I say this to you because it's very, very important that we understand how vestries and churches and rectors work together. And sometimes we get to do the really, really fun stuff like build buildings and put a strategic plan out there. And sometimes we have to do all the grunt work and have all the conversations to create the space for those to flourish. And I might add our own Paula Fowler, who's sitting here, our president of the DOK, is helping us in our strategic plan because of her work, and I'm thankful for that. I see her sitting right there. So without further ado, I want to give thanks for this year. I look forward to you jumping in, time, talent, and treasure. Be a part of the conversations. Talk to your leadership. Be excited as we welcome Nancy Jordan, who's walking out the door, Rachel Matulis, Dan Cuckle. Hey, Ben. I'm waiting for y'all to name your fourth. Come on, Dan, now you're up. I did three of four. I did 75%. Rebecca. 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 Got Rachel. All right, well, this is awkward. Hey, y'all go in peace and love and serve the Lord. We'll see you at 1050. Deacon Mark has got the sermon, and it's quite incredible. Oh, wait, go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.